Alyssa Morali is a nickel hyperaccumulator, which means that it takes nickel from the soil and sequesters it into its above ground mass. It can um, sequester up to about 3% of its own body weight. Nickel um, hyperaccumulators, well this particular hyperaccumulator is found on serpentine soils, and serpentine soils are made from the weathering of ultramafic rocks. Ultramafic rocks are found in the mantle of the earth, so it's no surprise that this type of soil is characterized um, by low calcium levels, high magnesium levels, um, low plant nutrients with, like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, as well as um, high concentrations of heavy metals such as nickel, lead, chromium. There are also shallow soils with low plant productivity and high rates of endemism. This particular um, plant is, is found, can be found in um, serpentine soils, like I said. The um, elemental defense hypothesis, which is what I based my research on, um, says that um, metal hyper accumulators benefit by reduced herbivory for having nickel in their above ground masses. Now this is different from different from other defenses that alyssum or other brassicaceae um, plants might use. They have trichomes, which are a physical defense, and they have cinegrin, which is a chemical defense, but there are um, insects or herbivores that have already found a way ar around those defenses. So elemental defense is a new defense that the plant might have might have come to counteract the herb herbivory. So we found in a previous study done by Kissel in Dr. McKenna's lab in 2008 that the nickel in the seedling, in Alyssa Morales seedlings, did not defend against generalist herbivores. They were um, eaten fairly quickly by slugs under field conditions. So when I saw that, I thought, well, how does the nickel affect against specialist herbivores? Because generalists are usually protected by um, a dilution effect where they consume a lot of different plants, so the toxicity of nickel might not have as much of a strong effect on generalists as opposed to a specialist. So I wanted to know, do high levels of soil nickel protect Alyssa morale against herbivory by a specialist herbivore, as well as does plant nickel concentration affect the growth or development of the specialist herbivore, Pieris rapi? Now to figure this out, we added nickel acetate and nickel sulfate in a one-to-one -one ratio to account for the differences in pH. We had um, zero parts per million, 100 parts per million, 500 parts per million, and 2,000 parts per million nickel level. And 2,000 parts per million is similar to the concentration you can find in nature. We um, germinated Alyssa Morales seedlings at each of those nickel levels. And after four months, we um, planted, we put four four small pots into, into an array. And so this array was just in a little Ziploc container with four pots, with four plants. These, um, the, we measured the leaf count, or we counted the leaves before we put the, before we put the um, larvae on. Um, then afterwards we put the larvae on, we covered the array with the inverted mesh top so that we could have airflow, water flow, and that the um, larvae would not escape. We also wanted to make sure there was um, adequate light getting through to the plant. After one week, we removed the larvae from the plant and counted the leaves again to see the difference. Now, what we noticed, what we noticed is that at zero parts per million, remember these plants um, are more, most similar to already the, um, their Brassicaceae relatives. They did not have nickel to defend them. They only had trichomes and cinegrin. We found at zero parts per million, those plants were decimated. The larvae were the biggest and we were able, able to recover the most larvae from this concentration of plants. At 100 and 500 parts per million, there was no significant difference in the amount of leaves before or after herbivory. So we already see nickel having a protective effect at the 100 parts per million nickel level. Um, those larvae were of like comparable size. We were able to still recover some from there. At 2,000 parts per million, these plants thrived despite herbivory. There were significantly more leaves after 
herbivory. So not only did they thrive, they were able to gain to gain mass, above ground mass, which is necessary if you're trying to survive in nature. So, and also these larvae were quite small and we weren't able to recover quite as many from, from there, supposedly because of decomposition already, we're you know, not sure. So basically we were able to conclude that um, high soil nickel protects Alyssa morale from herbivory by a specialist, Pierre's Rapey. Um, because plants with um, higher than zero nickel level, the 100, 500, 2000, did benefit from the protective effect of nickel. The um, plant concentrations also affect Pieris rapey growth because there was less consumption of leaves on, um, of leaves on plants with high nickel level. And um, the larvae that were recovered from plants with high nickel levels were, were visibly smaller than larvae recovered from plants of the lower nickel levels. Now, it's important to understand this or understand the interactions, interactions between the larvae and the plants um, because this plant is useful for phytoremediation purposes. They're looking at it because it can sequester nickel in its above ground masses. It can clean up soils that have been contaminated by nickel or um, by nickel. So we want to be able to understand exactly the role nickel plays and the um, whole ecology of the plant before we just um, introduce it because it is part of the Brassicaceae family and Brassicaceae are notorious for their um, invasiveness. Now, um, at this point, I just want to acknowledge um, Dr. McKenna at Howard University as well as the National Science Foundation for their grant and thank you for your time.